Now we're going to calculate capacitance. Before we worry about a specific geometry, let's talk about the general strategy to calculate a capacitance. Basically, what you want to do is you find Q and delta V in terms of the electric field. Find Q and delta V in terms of E. And by that, I mean for the geometry of your actual capacitor. Okay? So the capacitor we're going to do, we're going to start with the, the canonical capacitor, the parallel plate capacitor, like the one we talked about before. We have one here that we will be looking at in a minute. So parallel plate capacitor has your two plates like this. And each one has some charge on it. One has some positive charge density on the surface. One has some minus charge density on the surface. And when they're close together, they make an electric field on the inside, and they make equipotential lines or uh, surfaces between them like that. And if you wanted to think about it, they have a delta V between them like that. You could measure the voltage difference if you wanted to. So we're approximating them as infinitely charged planes. That's how we think of a capacitor. So first, what we can do is get uh, the charge in terms of E. And we can do that by remembering from Gauss's law that the E field at the surface of a charged plane was, what was it? It was sigma over 2 epsilon naught. So we have that field from the positive charges points to the right. But then we also have it from the uh, negative charges. But it also points to the right. right? So we want to really do this as a vector, and we called this the i hat direction. E due to the positive charges would be plus sigma over 2 epsilon naught i hat. But then E due to the negative charges would actually also be plus sigma over 2 epsilon naught i hat. Even though the charges are negative, the field would point the same way. Right? So these are both basically the same thing. The plus and minus are just telling you how much. We know they each have sigma. So E of the gap that we care about oops, is just twice this is sigma over epsilon naught right? in the i hat direction, if we're keeping up with directions. So that's E of the gap. Now, we want it in terms of Q, the total charge. Well, we also know the area of the plates. So we can also say E, let's just worry about the magnitude. E, the electric field magnitude in the gap, and it's uniform to the gap, is what? It's Q over A, that's sigma, charge per unit area, epsilon naught. That is a small epsilon naught. OK, so there we have the E field. Uh, or we have the charge in terms of the E field. We could solve it for charge. It would be that Q, the charge, is the E field in the gap, A epsilon naught. That was step one. Now, let's think about um, step two. Remember that in one dimension, the E field is minus dV dx. We talked about how the E field goes this way and these potential lines change in the last unit. So E is minus dV dx. So we could write that as dV is minus E dx. There's a little product placement almost there. And we could integrate uh, both sides. And if we're just doing a one-dimensional integral, you would see that delta V is basically the E field times the separation of the gap. We could call that D. Right? So delta V is E times D. So now we have delta V in terms of of both. So then the capacitance, we know the capacitance was defined as the charge over delta V. So now we just say it's E of the gap area times epsilon naught. The area times epsilon naught over E of the gap times D. So the E's cancel and we get the formula for the parallel plate capacitor, its capacitance is epsilon naught A over D. And this, your final formula 
I'll put a little parallel. That's for the parallel plate capacitor. Capacitance is not always equal to this. But your final formulas for capacitance will often have an epsilon naught. That sort of sets uh, the unit for you. And then it's often a, a geometrical factor. Because all that really matters here is the geometry that's creating the field and that the charge density has to move to create the field. And this is in farads if you do everything in F MKS units. Remember that epsilon naught is uh, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And you can state it in several awful, horrendous MKS units, but it's actually also in uh, farads per meter. So your formulas that you derive for capacitance should also have sort of an epsilon naught times something that comes out in meters. And here, sure enough, we have an area over a length. So it comes out um, in meters. And we put it all together. So now we're going to look at this with our parallel plate capacitor that we have here. Again, these are two metal plates very close together. They're hooked up to this electrometer. So the metal wires hook up to this thing that's a very sensitive electromechanical voltage meter. Okay? So right now you can see it's hanging down around zero. So what I'm going to do is charge up the capacitor by um, induction. So I'm going to hold the charged rod near this plate or near, near this electrode. That's going to push the electrons to that plate and then I'm going to short it and let the electrons jump to the other side. You may be able to hear some interference there as I do that. And then that should leave some charge on the capacitor and we can see uh, the needle has moved and it's moved to about about five, so around five. And if you look closely at that scale, you can see it's 500 volts. There's 500 volts on this capacitor. It's not dangerous because it's such a teeny amount of current, or such a teeny amount of charge. If it formed a current and went through my skin, it would be nothing because it's a teeny amount of charge, but it is actually at 500 volts. So now we want to see what can we test. We're measuring delta V, so if we start messing with the capacitance, we might see delta V change because the charge is constant. We can change capacitance, and let's see what happens to delta V, okay? So capacitance, I cannot change the permittivity of free space. I wish I could. Sometimes I feel like I can, but I can't. The area is hard to change. The area of the plates is pretty much constant, but the separation I can change. So let me increase the separation. So I'm just going to try it without shorting it. I'm going to pull this plate back. And oh, actually, see, it's dropped down to about 4 just because it's leaking charge. So we're down to about 4. But if I pull this plate back, oh, you can see it went up got to about seven, right around seven. Up, it's a little unintuitive. You would say, why did it go up? Well, actually, it makes sense. It went up, this got bigger, the capacitance went down. Okay? If the capacitance became smaller and this is constant, this has to get bigger. So mathematically, it actually makes sense. When the separation gets bigger, the voltage has to get bigger because the capacitance went down. You can also understand it physically, actually, if you think about it. You have two oppositely charged planes here. So if you, they want to be on top of each other, like the lowest energy would have been there just covering each other and being neutral. But if I start pulling them apart, what am I doing? I'm having to do work. I'm increasing their potential when I pull them apart. So I have two oppositely charged, constant charged planes, and I'm pulling them apart, I'm raising their potential. So the formulas make sense. Now let's look at some numbers and see how much charge we're talking about. So the capacitance C equals, we have the permittivity of free space, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter, times the area, and that was a 16 centimeter diameter plate, so that's times pi times 0.08 meters squared, it's 8 centimeter radius, over the separation is about a centimeter, 0.01 meters, and that gives you, in this case, 18 times 10 to the minus 12 farads. So that's 18 picofarads. So it turns out the MKS unit for capacitance, the farad, is a very large amount of capacitance. Most capacitors that you work with in electronics are much smaller. Most of them are microfarad down to nanofarad. Or sometimes, yeah, really, really teeny capacitance is picofarad. That's a large capacitor, but that's not a bunch of effort, a very large effort to make it a high capacitance. So just objects near each other tend to be on this sort of uh, picofarad scale. And we can also quickly figure out how much current or how much charge is on the plates. So we know that the charge equals CV, the capacitance times the potential. Well, we have 18 picofarads, 18 times 10 to the minus 12, and we had about 100 volts. Let's see here. Well, I guess we're up to a few hundred volts. 
So a few times 20 times 18, you can see we had about a nanocoulomb. So about 10 to the minus 9 coulombs were on each plate. So the numbers give sort of typical things you would expect in electronics. And I can see uh, we have a question. Let's, let's see. Oh, it's Andrea Plan B again. Isn't the field at a metal surface twice as big? Oh, yes, yes. This uh, is a good question. Notice when we were thinking about on, on the capacitor, we thought about these metal plates. And I said the electric field of the surface is sigma over, epsilon, over 2 epsilon naught. But at the surface of a metal, it's sigma over epsilon naught. So the question is, why didn't we use that? That question is so insightful, you would almost think I wrote it myself. So I'm going to spend a lot of time on that question. We're going to give it its own board. 